bright duty every student matters hello everyone now we are coming to discuss other effects of the industrial revolution inside this chapter the industrial revolution this chapter is focused in the context of britain or we can say england so after that now we are coming to discuss with other effects what were the other effects of industrial revolution in which context in the different context like economic effect political effect social and religious effect all such things we are coming to discuss inside this talk so first of all coming to discuss about that economic effect it is affected the country like england and what were its effect on the european continent as well as throughout the world so this way first of all we are coming to discuss inside the economic effect other factory system this is the economic effect the factory system we are coming to discuss inside this factory system the first great change which brought about the industrial revolution was break up of home industry home industries earlier textile were most of the work 70 to 80% were work done by the people in their homes so this home industry were completely broke down and its replacement by the factory system and this is the new system which was developed in england the old methods of small scale production in the homes by families with simple tools could not compete with the machine made goods because it was time consuming and already in the previous part in the previous slides we have already discussed about that the gradual development of the machineries technology which brought a complete revolution change in the industries the application of machinery and large scale production stimulated the growth of division of labor in the factories so this way the employment generation was also taking place in industries then next it comes about that expansion of industry and increase in national wealth this is now our focus is on that in national wealth how with the expansion of industry the country became rich so we are coming to discuss inside this the generation of wealth with the help of the industries with the introduction of the machines the industrial revolution gave stimulus of to new industries which began to manufacture goods on a large scale earlier these industry textile industries were there but most of the work were done by the family members in the home but now factory system has been developed with the help of the new technology with the new machines so now the production can be done at a mass scale at a large scale the enormous increase in production led to a great rise in the national wealth it was the industrial revolution which made england a rich country and enable her to stand the strain of the napoleonic wars of 1795 to 1815 this is the entire time period for the napoleon in 1815 napoleon was defeated in the battle of waterloo before that since the 1804 till the 1815 he was a military dictator ruler of france military dictator ruler of france since 1804 till the 1815 after his defeat only he was defeated with the european powers the countries which were involved in this war england russia prussia and austria these were the four countries were involved in the napoleonic wars which was taking place in the year 1815 in the waterloo and napoleon was completely defeated then on their onwards this country became very rich in the european continent then the third point it comes about that establishment of industrial capitalism 
this is a new terminology emerged in the world capitalism how this system has been developed or emerged the emergence of the term capitalism capital it is used in economics for wealth money the enormous surplus wealth resulting from the growth of industries was concentrated in the hands of the industries and capitalist who own these factories the, basically the owners of the factories they were the wealth or the money were concentrated in their hands so with the progress of industrial revolution the industrial capitalist they grew richer and richer because the entire profit was kept by this the capitalists by the individualist individuals who they were the or owner of the industries it shaped the course of further industrialization by investing the profits in the new enterprises rather than sharing them with the working classes proletariat already we discussed in the previous slides in the previous part of the chapter this the working class who they earned their living by wages industries they made the profit the work which is done by the workers but these profits were not shared among the workers the profits were kept by this industrialists so this way this concept of capitalism has been developed then the fourth point it comes economic imperialism this is about the economic imperialism with the enormous increase in the profit of the industrial capitalists there arose a problem of profitable investment of this wealth imperialism means that a system of the monarch imperial system is that monarchical system autocrat the power is concentrated in the hands of one man when we are talking about that and discussing in the context of the monarch kingdom empire then it is this monarch or the king of that area here we are discussing in the context of industries so the owners of the factory owners of the industries so what they were doing this is about that the enormous increase in the profits because the machine made goods they are producing now at a large scale mass production is there already we discussed in the previous part about that the britain was having that the so many colonial countries under them many countries were colonized by them and this the produced goods they have already market in their colonial countries so huge profit were earned by these capitalists the development of multiplied productivity necessitated an ever larger market for the disposal of manufactured goods and the needs became more urgent in the latter half of the 19th century when the domestic markets had begun to reach a saturation point the governments under pressure from the capitalist they restored to imperialist expansion and to increase influence in the under developed countries of the world now after this the napoleon defeat of the napoleon the conservative regime started in europe monarchical form of government were reestablished reestablished in the european continent before that the french revolution took place or happened occurred in the 1789 after this the 1789 this french revolution is one of the remarkable point in the world history drastic change remarkable change is experienced or started which was the demand of democracy but due to the some the domestic reasons this democratic form of government which was established in france in 1791 did not last for a long and finally in 1804 due to the political instability in france this land was started ruling by a military dictator napoleon bonaparte so this is about that the back history of napoleon and after that becoming declared himself as a crown of france he has started conquering neighboring territory 
and making his family members as a ruler of those conquered territory after the annexation so the countries like russia prussia austria and britain they formed the european power secret plan were prepared by them and they have all together all these the four countries which they were involved in or they have declared themselves as european powers they defeated napoleon in the battle of waterloo in 1815 and finally again this entire europe has started developing this conservative regime monarchical form of government and in this manner only this france was given the charge of the bourbon family which was the long traditional or hereditary family whose rulers and whose descendants were becoming the ruler of the france again after this defeat of napoleon france was given under the rule of bourbon family so this is about that the establishment of industrial capitalism and the economic imperialism so this is all about that the governments under pressure from the capitalists they restored to imperialist expansion and to increase influence in the under developed countries of the world basically the asian countries and the countries in africa this economic imperialism was responsible for international rivalries and wars the efforts of germany to capture markets from the hands of the britain were one of the important causes of the first world this is now the economic imperialism was responsible for international rivalries if you have remember about this standard 10 was it in the syllabus of that the nationalism rise of nationalism in europe there it has been used a term balkan states these the balkan was a very large territory many of the countries were part of the balkans but they were having that rivalry on the basis of their ethnic and religious differences diverse culture greece was also the part of one of the part of the balkan countries so this is what it says about that the european countries exported this is the economic imperialism was responsible for international rivalries and wars and the efforts of germany to capture markets from the hands of the britain were one of the important causes of the first world war which broke out in the year 1914 and lasted till 1918 then it comes international economic dependence this is the fifth point international economic dependence one of the most important results of the industrial revolution was that it enormously accelerated the movement towards international economic dependence which had begun with the commercial revolution of the 16th and the 17th century example is quoted over here about that the great britain depended on overseas lands for raw materials like cotton and wool to feed spindles this was now the land was not have not having suitable condition for the cultivation of this whatever the feed is required for the industries the raw material which is required for the industries so this is about that the great britain now dependent on overseas lands for raw materials as the population of western world especially that of england became more and more engaged in industries it became increasingly dependent on other countries for food supply paying for it with coal manufactures shipping etc so now the most of the population as they were now engaged in the industrial worker as a industrial worker so they were sorties of the food grains the european countries now exported manufactured goods in exchange for food and other agricultural products the whole world became a market place this location in many part of the world often has important repercussions in countries thousands of miles away but they all were the part of the international economic dependence how the dependence of this industrial countries the industries they are depending for their raw material to the countries where these raw materials are been cultivated and 
in the country where the industrialization was taking place our focus of this chapter is only and only in the context of britain so they have the shortage of food supply also so this way by supplying the manufactured goods they are importing the food goods mechanization of warfare this is the sixth point what it says that the mechanization of warfare one of the most important impacts of the industrial revolution was the development of new and efficient mechanized weapons of warfare this the beginning part of the chapter we have discussed about that the technology has developed a lot in the same manner there were the development in the inventions were done or taking place even on so in the warfare weapons also these weapons have rendered war immensely destructive and dangerous to the civilized pro progress of humanity so this the invention of the bombs atom bombs nuclear weapons so which has been now started using to for the dangerous and the destructive for the destruction of the civilized human increase in population this is also one of the most important effect of on the industrial revolution one of the most important consequences of was a remarkable increase in the population of europe and the shifting of population from villages to cities now the people they have started migrating migration started taking place in the villages the peoples they are mig migrating towards the industrial towns industrial cities with this motive that they will get a job over there so this led to the increase in population in towns and cities the population of europe increased from this is a figure given 87 lakh 683000 in 1800 to this is 6 lakh 577000 in 1990 no less the significance was that the increase in the population of the cities the urban population of england rose from 30% to 70% this was the massive increase in the population 30% to 70% now and in the usa from the 4% to 40% usa it was 4 to 4% to 40% then it says that this large growth of urban population brought in its train new problems in the economic and social spheres new problems of health education and the problems in the family life everywhere not only one point is given over there so this is the increase in population how it is how it affected it affected like that there is 30 to 70% in england this was the growth rate of the population 4 to 40% in usa then what was its effect the increase in population the problems were faced in every sphere both in it affected both the social and economic life of the people the problem related health increased education and the family then this is the last point of the economic effect general masses grew how this general masses grew to the poor how this poverty was the result or the effect of this industrial revolution this is the capitalist class grew richer but the general masses on the other hand grew poorer just now we have discussed about that the this expansion of industry and increase in nas national wealth then we have discussed about the establishment of industrial capitalism so this way this capitalism created the enormous enormous wealth for individual the profit which has been earned by this capitalist they were not shared among the working class people so this was the consequence of industrial revolution that general masses they were just 
going towards that the different direction not they are they are earning a good wages from the factories but in place of that they are becoming due to severe competition to machine made goods a large number of people who used to earn their livelihood by spinning and weaving or from other small crafts were reduced to merely factory workers earlier who they were considered as the weavers at the craft producers with this the industrialization and the mechanization and the growth of the factory system now these producers they merely become the workers this is also one of the reason behind it the small farmers or yeomen devoid of supplementary income from home industry and they were compelled to sell their lands and become mere factory workers this led to the impoverishment of general masses so this is the cause and the reason behind it why this general masses they grew they grew in place of that the producers now they have become the workers this is the main reason behind it this is the picture of the factory system this way these factories they grew in the beginning or in the first phase in the england then it comes about that the political effects what are the political effects it results the industrial revolution just like as the economic effect equally it is very much very significant the strengthening of the middle class this is now we are coming to discuss bourgeois who owned and operated the factories then they were the foundries and the mines profited enormous by the revolution it was conscious of its power and wanted to use the political ends now this how to bring the political ends in this factory and the factory system in england the parliamentary reforms which happened in the year 18 ad 1832 according to this redistribution uted seats in parliament to grant representation to unrepresented towns in new industrial districts gave the right to voting to a large group of moderately well to do earlier this voting right was given only to the wealthy person every citizen in the country they were not given this voting right but with this with the industrialization who the people which mass which section of the people they got this voting right to bring the means the political ends in england the parliamentary reforms of ad 1832 reforms were there this is the parliamentary reform redistribution of seats were there and what happened finally the middle class which now became powerful successfully put down the agitation of the chartist what what is chartist which was an effort of the lower class to secure representation in the parliament this is known as the chartist movement effort made by the lower class people to get their representation in the parliament in france the position of the bourgeois was strengthened by the revolution in of 1830s the government established after the revolution was under the effect effective control of the middle class the zollverein established in germany mainly benefited the bourgeois this is now zollverein it is a trade union or custom union it was formed in germany with the initiative of prussia 
and this was established mainly by the germany benefited the bourgeois bourgeois were the mean who they were benefited with this simply the meaning of bourgeois is the middle class so this is about that the middle class which now became powerful successfully put down the agitation of the chartists which was an effort of the lower class to secure representation in the parliament and in france the position of the bourgeois was strengthened by the revolution of 1830s concept of the aristocracy was completely now abolished by the year 1830s with the emergence of the middle class and middle class actually were the people who they were involved or they constitute the middle class were the big business man traders merchants professionals they were mainly constituting the middle class and they are known as the bourgeois jalverin a custom union which was established in germany mainly in the to benefit the bourgeois to benefit the middle class people who they were involved in trade and business next it is about that the relation of military position with industrialization the other important result of the industrial revolution was that the military power of a state now depended on the extent of industrial progress made by it this is the result relation of military position this is the military of the country army of the country defense forces of the country and their relation with the industrialization in the latter half of the 19th century england germany and france emerged as strong military powers as compared to russia because the latter they had relatively made less progress in the field of industry this is the main reason behind it in the second half or the latter half of the 19th century this england germany and france these three country has emerged the strong military power when it has been compared with russia because in beginning of the 19th century russia was also but after that the industries were not developed or not established in russia this was the main reason behind it they did not this russia did not made progress in the industries in the field of industries it was the most powerful factor which contributed to the dominance of england france and germany over europe in beginning of the 20th century in the latter half of the 19th century japan accepted the industrial revolution and became a dominant power and challenged russia the latter half of the 19th century japan is a it is an asian country later 9 half of the 19th century now this japan has started dominating they have accepted the industrial revolution and became a dominant power and started challenging to us the next topic it is about intellectual and cultural effects rise of new ideas under this topic now we are coming to discuss about that another vital effect of industrial revolution was the development of political and economic thought political and economic thought thinking based on that the politics of the country as well as the economy of the country. great social and economic changes made by the industrial revolution already we are discussing throughout the chapter which gave the government development of science of economics or political economy it brought a new philosophy of individualism a new concept of individualism gradually we are coming to the different terms which has been used particularly in the context of this chapter proletariat bourgeois then now here we are coming to discuss capitalism 
Now, this is the fourth new term which we are coming to interact inside this chapter is individualism. Started with proletariat, followed by capitalism, then bourgeois. Now, it is about the individualism. Revolutionary inventions and production on gigantic scale, which compelled industrialists to claim the right to be left alone to develop to their full for the entire development, the complete development. This doctrine of laissez faire, free trade, this is in French language, it has been used, received a great impetus. From the works of Adam Smith, Ricardo Mill, Malthus, and Herbert Spencer. Very famous. The Malthus, he has given his entire this philosophy and his ideology was based on that the growth and development of economics. Herbert Spencer, he was a bioscientist and he has given how to survive, how to adapt. Then next it is about that growth of socialism. Just now we have discussed, explained about that the four new terms. Now that this is the new one again it is included in this chapter is socialism. Just opposite to capitalism. They are opposite to each other, socialism and capitalism. Extension of the 18th century, doctrine of Lazarus Ferry, by the governments in the first half of the 19th century and the operation of principle of free competition, free trade and the free competition in the economic sphere. Free competition with in the field of economics or economy. Then what it is suggested by that, this person is about that, the economic sphere which adversely affected the working class. Adverse effect of this working class is the competition, how it adversely affected, how the working class is getting affected. It led to a ruthless inhuman economic exploitation by the capitalists. Because of that, the profit which is earned by the industrialists, which is not shared among the workers. And these capitalists or the industrialists, they are making their profit on by their workers, with the work of the workers. So, this is all about that, the exploit, economic exploitation by the capitalists. The misery of the exploited class which made Fine and sensitive souls to raise a voice to a protest against the system and propose many schemes of reform. So, this misery of the exploited class. Who are the exploited class? Exploited class is here the workers, industry work, industrial workers, laborers. They were Completely exploited by the capitalists, by their owners and how to overcome from this problem? Their voice has now started raised by the, against the system of the capitalists and many of the schemes and the reforms were introduced by some of the philosophers, by some of the leaders. Utopian socialism was thus revived and then came Karl Marx. The moment this word socialism comes, it is in the context or with the name of the Karl Marx. Under the influence of his teachings, the new proletariat class became more and more politically conscious. With the teachings of this Karl Marx, this proletariat class, the working class, now they are greatly influenced by the teachings of Karl Marx. They are getting influenced and they became more and more conscious about the political system of the 
Marxist socialism, which was the most disrupting of all the 19th century political ideas, was the direct outcome of the Industrial Revolution. It was just the Marx, the theory, his philosophy, was the direct outcome of Industrial Revolution means what? That this, the theory, the philosophy which is given, the ideology of the Marxian theory, was that the profit to be shared among the workers, which was just against the capitalist theory. So it is said that it was the direct outcome of the Marxist philosophy or the theory, ideology of socialism is directly the outcome of the industrial revolution. The next it is about that rise of engineering research. The industrial revolution stimulated scientific investigation and research. As technological skill became more and more complex, experts are required to manage and improve them, which gave rise to profession of engineering. This is now profession This is scientific investigation and the research, technological skill, which is now becoming day by day, it is becoming very complex. And many of the experts now they have started, they have started to manage and to improve their profession of engineering with the help of the research work. Science began to put more and more service and service of technology. Gradually, large-scale industrial research laboratories began to be established. Already in the beginning part only, it has been given. According to the need and the requirement, there were the gradual development of the technology. The machineries were developed and which has brought a great impact upon this industrial revolution. In the same manner, this the research in the engineering, in the technological field has been started. Then the last point it is given about that change in habits and thought of life. The concentration of population in large cities due to the industrial revolution brought an unprecedented change in the habits of thought and life of the people. This is the topic is only mentioned over here with this, the change in habits and the thought, the thinking of the human life. In the large cities, the concentration of population is changed. How it is? Because of that, the industrial revolution and their habits and the thinking also has been influenced. It is completely changed.